Alright, so today we're going to be taking a look at Bianca Veritas or Veritas' um, ability overview and everything including some tips on how to play her as well. So if you're interested, make sure to stay tuned and if you end up liking the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe and let's get into this. Alright, so first let's take a look at her auto attacks, normal attacks, whichever you want to call it. So as you can see, it does physical damage and lightning damage at the same time. I don't think that's how it's supposed to be. It's probably because of her like bow, because she's using like a signature weapon. That's why you see like lightning damage along the way. Now, if you don't have her signature weapon, if you're using like a five star bow, you're never gonna, you're probably not gonna be able to proc that lightning damage. Now let's take a look at her red orbs. As you can see, her red orbs pretty much cover the full map. It's really good against those bosses or enemies that like to hit you and get you CC, right? They hit you and you kind of get knocked and you end up wasting a lot of time there. So with Bianca's super long range DPS, her orbs and her core passive is really, really good against those enemies. So it's gonna reduce the time waste of maybe getting hit or trying to dodge the enemy's attack. But when you need to dodge, you still have to dodge to get into the matrix. But it's just a really, really nice feature to add in because she's a bow user. Now let's take a look at more of her red orbs. Yep, a full map coverage. And one thing about the red orb is it's pretty much the same with like Dark Watsonabe. If you do like 1 to 2 ping, you would only deal like um, physical damage, which is not worth it. Usually you would do like 3 red ping to be able to do like electro damage because once you go into 3 ping, the physical damage would be convert into like lightning damage. So 3 ping provides more value basically. And now let's take a look at a blue orb. Blue Orb has like two different styles. One, you could go into purely Blue Orb, or two, you could use Blue Orb into her core passive. So now let's take a look at the first one first, without core passive. So you proc it, it kind of repels the enemy, dealing a little bit of damage. And when you do normal attacks, you can see like there is small little arrows that are kind of like a homing arrow attacking the enemy, kind of doing like extra damage. Now take a look at here. And she's doing damage that has like small little arrows along with her normal attacks as well. So that's the blue orb's ability. Now let's take a look at her yellow orb abilities, which I think is really, really interesting. Now let's take a look at this. So she does a tree ping first. As you can see, there's a huge AoE damage there. The, that huge electro field will be dealing damage every single second while slowing the enemies inside them. That's the first thing. And then let's take a look at the one ping orb. As you can see, one ping, it's significantly smaller compared to like the three ping. And the three ping electro field also lasts longer than one ping. So the more yellow ping you ping, the longer it lasts. Now that's not the main point here. We all know this. The main point is you can use the yellow orb as a dodge as well instead of just trying to do damage. Let's take a look here. When you, proc your, um, when you proc your yellow orb, you kind of blink into a different location. So if you're running out of dodges in a pain cage or maybe like a war zone, you don't want an enemy to hit you, just proc that yellow orb to do that extra dodge so you can, it could get you out of like risky situations. So you don't have to get hit by the enemy and it's gonna be like very time consuming to climb on everything. I know a lot of people are perfectionists, they're trying to aim for like um, zero damage hits, so this would be a really good option. Let's take a look at it again of the yellow orb instantly teleport to a different location so that's how you use the yellow orb one for damage slowing a huge AoE slowing the enemy mobs second using it as a dodge um, alternative all right now this is what everyone has been looking forward to which is her core passive now her core passive activate um, method is to do three red ping and one blue ping that's how you go into her core passive now this is how she deals a huge chunk of her damage as well her normal attacks her all her red orb her yellow orb blue orb or whatever those deals like pretty much like no damage maybe like some damage but this is how she deals like most of her damage 90 percent of damage comes from her core passive now let's take a look at her core passive right right here she ping her red orb and then ping blue orb and you go into like a sniper mode which is this, which is also like a full map coverage. And it's pretty much like huge AoE damage as well. Now people, a lot of people have been concerned about like, oh, is she good in Warzone because she's a bow character? Her normal attacks kind of deal to uh, most damage like one enemy. Her core passive is how she deals most of her damage and her core passive deals AoE damage. So you can pretty much deal damage to everyone that is in line with her shot. So you can deal damage to all the mobs. That's what makes her really good in Warzone as well. Let's take a look again. All right, that's it. And I think it's around here, 451. 
Let's take a look at her abilities again. Now I want you to count how much arrow has she fired in her sniper mode. Let's take a look at here. She goes into her sniper mode. Warp. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six arrows. Remember that. Now, when she goes into her sniper mode, her dodges kind of change. Instead of like doing a backflip, she kind of does like a flash. That flash is really important because when you dodge in your sniper mode, when you when you dodge in your sniper mode, when you fire your core passive, the charging time would be reduced, greatly reduced. So you'll be able to fire more arrows if you do that. Now, let me go to like 451. Take a look at how much arrow she's able to do in her core passive when she dodge every single arrow. 3 red ping, 1 blue ping or whatever, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now why does she do that? Again, the same thing that I said again there, because she's dodging, right? Take a look here, 3 red ping, blue ping, shoot, dodge, shoot, dodge, shoot, dodge, shoot, dodge, shoot, dodge. Now when she's dodging, you can see like, she kind of goes into like a lightning form, just kind of like flashing instead of like back flipping. This is how you're able to kind of you know squeeze in one extra arrow so i don't really recommend this method because this method is really good against like pinkish bosses only you wouldn't want to run out of like um dodges when you kind of try to squeeze in the one arrow unless you're very very confident that that final arrow would be able to finish up the enemy then go for it if you're not confident you feel like oh after you're doing all those dodges you still can't kill the enemy then don't do it because you're gonna run out of dodges now what do you do if you have a yellow ping, you could do that to kind of dodge the enemy if he's trying to attack you. If you don't have a yellow ping, you're fucked. You're going to get attacked and you're going to waste a lot of time. Now, one more thing that makes her really, really broken is when you switch to um, Bianca, you kind of get like 3 free red ping proc damage. You don't get that extra orb, but automatically you just fire that 3 red ping effect, right? It's almost very, very similar to like um, Watanabe Astro, right? When you switch to Watanabe Astro from your tank or your healers, you don't have to ping any random 3 ping. You could just ping your 1 red ping and go into your core passive. Now that's the same with um, Bianca Veritas as well. That's what makes her really, really OP. Let's take a look at this. Let's wait for a cooldown and then let's go in. Switch. And you can see he didn't fire any pinks. He didn't. He didn't do any like three red ping. He just automatically gives you like a free red three ping effect. And then now all you have to do is just ping one blue ping. You could automatically go into like the core passive. So this is what makes her really only OP. Now imagine if you kind of go into a stage where you didn't switch people yet. You're using Bianca. You kind of like try to accumulate orbs, right? All you need to do is just accumulate 3 red orbs and 2 blue orbs separately. You can't make the blue orbs stick together. You have to make them separate. Now you switch to a healer, you switch to your tank, kind of drag the time. And whenever your cooldown for your Bianca is up, switch back to Bianca, get that free 3 red orb pink, pink your blue orb, go into your core passive, deal damage with that 6 arrow, or maybe if you're dodging, do that 7 arrows. And then you have save up extra like three red pings and one blue ping as well. Now ping that red ping and blue ping go into a second core passive. This would be able to give you like a ton of damage. This is pretty much really good against like pinkish. You can pretty much one shot a pinkish boss at this point. Or maybe if you go into like war zone, that's really good for a rotation as well. So this is the thing that I want you guys to know. If you really want to play her well, this is really important uh, for her. Now let's take a look at her ult. Her ult is very underwhelming to be honest. Pretty much like um, Alpha as well. Alpha and Aspianka I guess, they don't rely on their ults to do damage, not like the others, right? They don't really rely on their ult to do damage. Their ult is pretty much like a supplemental damage. Most of the damage come from core passive. For Aspianka, it's her core passive sniper mode for S-Class Alpha, S-Class Lucia Alpha. Her main damage is pretty much from her sword wave core passive as well. So they are pretty easy to play to be honest. All you have to do is just proc your core passive and do a ton of damage. They're not really that um, complicated. Now finally let's take a look at her QT. Which is nothing impressive to be honest. It's really really close to like A class Bianca which is very wrestling. It's not a huge deal. Now again, when the Eternal Engine happens, I will be streaming it on YouTube. If you're interested, make sure to tune in. I will stream on day one, talking about what um, stages you should be farming and everything. I'll go through all of that, possibly. I'll probably make a video about that as well. And the second day, I'll be rolling for Bianca and her signature weapon. So if you're interested to watch me suffer, trying to hit pity and everything, make sure to tune in. And hopefully this video is helpful to you guys. 
Hopefully I earned that like button. Be sure to like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you want to see more and make sure to turn on the notification. And when I go on live, you'll be able to receive that and you'll be able to join that as well. So thank you for watching. See you guys during the new event. Peace.